All right, let's take a look at number 80. The daily high temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit of a town are recorded for one year. The median high temperature is 62. The inner quartile range of high temperatures is 32, which is most likely to be true. Okay, so when I see median and then I think inner quartile, and then I see inner quartile range, I'm thinking box and whisker. So remember with the box and whisker, you have a box which is from Q1 to Q3. The median, the middle term is the middle of that, and then the whiskers go all the way down to the minimum and the maximum. The inner quartile range then is from Q1 to Q3. So from this value all the way over to this value, that range is 32. And the median is 62. So the middle value of temps, the middle temperature is about 62. And the range to the first quartile and the, second, and the third quartile is 32. Now think about that word quartile. Quartile sounds like quarter, and that's a good clue to remind you that those, that breaks the data set up into 25%. So there's 25% of the data between the minimum and Q1. There's 25% of the data between Q1 and the median. 25% between the median and Q3, and 25% between Q3 and the max. Now, even though we don't know exactly what Q1 and Q3 are, and we really can't find them, you can kind of find an estimate but just know this, it's going to span below and above 62, and that span is 32. So what I mean by that is this couldn't be 10, because that would be a range of just of 52 just on that side. So maybe, and this is just an estimation, maybe I would take half of 32 to see about where these, Q, these quartiles would be. Okay, not exactly the right way to do it, um, but it can give you an idea, okay? Maybe half of this quartile range is from here and half is from here, okay? So if I took half of 32, that would be 18. I would know that this would be, uh, or sorry, not 18, that would be 16. I know this would be somewhere around, you know, 40 something, and then the other one would be 16 higher. So it'd be somewhere around 70 something. Let's just read these options and see what we can come up with. Approximately 25% of the days had a high temp less than 30 degrees. Well, up here, really, we don't know 30 degrees anywhere, right? So, and even so, if, I, if this was 30, 25% would have less than that. But Q1 can't be 30 because that would have a range of 32 just from the Q1 to the median. And it has a range of 32 from the Q1 to the Q3. So, cannot be A. Well, let's try the next one then. I'm going to erase this because we said it cannot be 30. Approximately 25% of the days had a high temp less than 62. So 62 is right here. 25% is less than that. Well, there's 25% less than that down to Q1, and then there's another 25% less than that. So actually, there's a 50% of the data that's less than 62. We can rule out B. But that leads us right into C. Approximately 50% of the days had a high temp less than 62. That's going to be the bottom half of the box and whisker, which would be 50%. So it is C. And when you look at D, we really don't know anything about 94 degrees, so we can stick with our answer being C. Remember that quartiles? Break the data up into uh, the data set into quarters. So uh, fourth or 25% of the data set is in each quarter. All right, 81, what is the range of the following sets of numbers? Well, remember finding range is equal to the maximum minus the minimum. So just take the max and subtract the min from it. The maximum number that I see is 46. The minimum number that I see the lowest is 23. 46 minus 23 gives me 23. Your range, then, is 23. Number 82, what is the inner quartile range of the following set of numbers? In order to find the inner quartile range, or IQR, you need to find the median first, which means we need to arrange the data. So let's put it in order from least to greatest. 
The smallest number I see is 398, then 421, then 442, 464, 486, 505, and 524. All right, to find the median, we find the middle. So I like to count in from both sides. The middle term is 464. That is your median or your Q2. Then to find your Q1 and Q3, you need to find the medians of each half. So cancel, cancel. Your lower quartile is 421. The upper quartile is 505. The inner quartile range is equal to Q3 minus Q1, or 505 minus 421. So 505 minus 421 will give you 84. The correct answer for 82 is B. Problem number 83. Oliver asked 200 students to select their favorite sports, then recorded the results in the bar graph below. So these are the results out of 200 students, meaning that a total of votes, all of these bars added together, should be a total of 200. Oliver will ask another 80 students to select their favorite sport based on the information in the bar graph. How many more students of the next 80 will ask are likely to select basketball rather than football. So the first thing you need to do is find out, well, how many students out of the next 80 are likely to select basketball? How many students out of the next 80 are likely to select football? We can use the bar graphs to make a prediction. So I like to set up a proportion. To figure out how many students out of the next 80 would select football, I would look at how many students selected football now out of the 200 that were polled. So 200 students is the total for this graph, and 50 selected football. 50 for football out of 200 total. Well, the next survey is going to be out of 80 students. I want to know how many will select football, so I would make, write a proportion and put X on top, or maybe even, you know what, I'm going to put F on top, so I remember that this stands for the number of students that will select football. Cross multiply, and then divide, and I can see that the number of students that will select football will be 20 out of the next 80. And this is just a prediction. Well now let's do that same thing for how many students out of the next 80 will select basketball. Well, look at your bar graph to start you off. That's going to be your first ratio. Out of 200 students, about 75 selected basketball, and I got that number from the height of the bar. And I want to know how many this will be out of 80 students. Again, a proportion, cross multiply. And divide. So 30. 30 will select basketball out of the next 80. Now the last thing then is what is the question really asking? You see I have 20 as an answer and I have 30 as an answer. But the question was how many more will choose basketball over football? So basically basketball has how many more than football? You actually need to find the difference. Basketball had 30, football had 20. Find the difference, basketball has 10 more. So the answer is A. For problem number 84, you're given a stem and leaf plot and you wanna find what the median is. Now you could always list out the numbers in the stem and leaf plot. Remember that this is the tens column and this is the ones column. So one bar three means 13. So we would have zero six, which is six as a data value. 
then 1 bar 2 means 12, 1 bar 3 means 13, and you could list all of those out. Then you could find the median by counting in on the lowest and the highest until you get to the middle. You can actually also do this right on the bar, right on the seven leaf plot, but it's, ha it's a little bit more work. You see, start at the top and the bottom, but you have to start with the lowest number and the highest number. So six and 38. Then 12 or 17 is the next lowest. 12 is the next lowest. 37 is the next highest. And you could keep doing this on both the top and the bottom. So the next high lowest would be 14, and the next highest after 30 would be 28. So I crossed out one, two, three, four of the lows, four of the highs. Keep going. 17 and 28, then 20 and 28, 23 and 27. And I could get to my two middle terms. That means in the middle of this data set, as you go on, the two middle values will be 24 and 24. The median then is the middle of those two, which is just 24. So your answer is A. If those numbers were different, remember you could add them up and divide by 2 to find the true middle. You're still going to get 24 here, but I just want to show you in case you had two different numbers for the median. So when you see a stem and leaf plot, you can list out the numbers and then find the median by finding the middle. You can also find the middle on the plot, but it's a little bit harder. So I actually kind of recommend listing out, listing out the values if it's confusing to you.